Everybody wants power during a power outage, and I've got two very popular DIY-friendly home battery backup systems. This is the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2, and this is the Anchor Solex Home Power Panel. I've actually had both of them installed because the company sent them to me, and you can see they are connected to one another, but they do not need to work together. So in this video, I wanna compare these two systems, starting with the main similarities, and then covering the significant differences. So both of these can help with the three main goals of why you might even consider getting one of these in the first place. And that first goal is that when there's a power outage, does it automatically transfer the power from the batteries to your home's electrical system? And so I'm gonna do that right now. Let's turn this off. Three, two, one. I don't know if you saw the lights flicker, just barely. But uh, if there was a storm outside and I'm filming this video, I wouldn't even notice, basically. I would see maybe a little bit of a flicker. That's how fast these, these systems are able to switch over to the battery power if there was a power outage. So I'm still running the house off of the batteries, and that brings us to number two. If you have electric rates that change, time of use rates, you can get a system like this to help you save on electric costs so that you can charge up the batteries when rates are low and then use them to run your house when rates are higher. And the third reason is that you can take advantage of solar panels to charge up the batteries and use them with these systems. So both of these smart systems wire directly into your home's electrical system. They both use lithium ion phosphate based battery systems to be the battery. So the EcoFlow uses the Delta Pro Ultra or the Delta Pro 3, I have that over there and the Anchor system uses the F3800. So you need at least one of these and one of these. The Anchor system has spots for two that you can plug in, and the EcoFlow system has spots for three of them. Both of the power systems have expandability. For example, I have an expansion battery right here. The Anchor system, you can get up to six of these expansion batteries per F3800. And the EcoFlow one, if you max it out, and because you can get three of them, you could get an incredible 90 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. And if you max out the anchor system, you can get a little bit under 54 kilowatt hours of storage. Both offer high AC output, so you really can run your house from these power stations when they're connected to these guys. The F3800 by itself can output 6,000 watts of continuous power, and the Delta Pro Ultra can output 7,200 watts of continuous power. And the more units you add, you just add up the amount. So if you add another one of these, that gets you up to 12,000. If you add another one of these, it adds up to over 14,000. One of the biggest loads that you might have at your house is starting a central air conditioner. And so you need to look up the surge values for these, usually double what the continuous power is, and then see if that's enough to start your air conditioner. If you don't know how to do that, drop me a question down in the comments below and I'll try to help. And both systems come with a smartphone app that you can use to monitor and control things. The EcoFlow system has a bit more information and control because it can monitor and control individual circuits, whereas the home power panel isn't really set up for that. Those are the main similarities. Now let's talk about the significant differences between the main functions of these two. I have the power shut off, so this is all safe in here, and I'm actually running the house loads on the Smart Home Panel 2 off of the Delta Pro 3. This is the home power panel. It's pretty unique. Its biggest distinctive is that it's an AC couple device. It connects through a breaker, in my case, a 100 amp breaker on my main panel, and it also comes with current sensors that you install on the two wires coming into your panel from the main power company, and they connect in down here. So when you have the F3800 connected in under here and you turn on a savings mode in the app, what happens is this thing tells the inverter to sync with the power company, increase the voltage a little bit, and that basically causes the power to back feed here back into your main panel. It also outputs here. This is for the backup load center. This is how the Smart Home Panel 2 is connected. So it'll, it'll put power through here and here while the grid is on. Now I call this local back feeding because it can provide power to all the circuits in your home without having to move any of the wires and I'll demonstrate how that works in a moment. Now these set of wires on the right are for backup loads in case there's a power outage then this the grid connection will be cut because it won't back feed when there's a power outage and then the power from the batteries will go to these loads. So the Smart Home Panel 2 is essentially a smart sub panel. That's how you can think of it with 12 slots for circuit breakers or 24 if you use tandem breakers. You can monitor and control each one of these like I was mentioning. So for example, if I want to turn off some of the circuits here, this is the app, just do confirm. I don't know if you saw some of the lights turned off. I believe it's this one I just turned off and then I could turn it back on 
with the touch of a button. One thing it can't do is that it can't backfeed power. So it does not ever backfeed power this direction back into your home's electrical system. So hopefully it makes sense how these guys can work together because the home power panel does not know that this is here and vice versa. It just thinks these four wires are going to a backup load center and the smart home panel too feels like these wires are just the grid or breaker off the main panel. Now let's talk about how each of these work when the grid is providing power. The smart home panel two aims to achieve electrical cost savings by running the house loads through this panel. And so that when the grid is up, you can see there's a white light there. It says the grid is up and you choose one of the three savings modes in the app. That's how that works. Otherwise, if you have a battery connected like I have here and it's not in a savings mode, it's just sitting there to provide backup power in case there's an outage. So here's the EcoFlow app and you could choose between the three savings modes. There's self-powered where you would use solar power to recharge the batteries. There's scheduled tasks where you can choose the times and dates of discharging and charging the batteries. And then down here is time of use mode. And in this mode, you input the parameters of your utility rates and times, and the algorithm will aim to save you costs by doing things like charging the battery when rates are low, and then using the battery when rates are high. So in order for the battery to power the home loads, the Smart Home Panel 2 needs to physically disconnect from the grid and connect the power station, which is the AC source. So let me turn on the savings mode and you should hear the relay click when it disconnects from the grid to the battery. So did you hear that? And maybe even you saw some light flicker because there's that millisecond switch over when the relay is engaging. So now we're running from the battery and if we turn off the savings mode, you can hear that relay click again. Now when the home power panel is connected to the grid, it also has a white light indicator. It works very differently than the smart home panel too. Like it doesn't need to disconnect from the grid because it has that AC coupling feature. Here's a look at the Anchor app. It has two saving modes, self-consumption, where the algorithm aims to maximize solar panel input, and it also has time of use mode, where like in the EcoFlow system, you can set your specific rate and schedule to maximize cost savings. And both systems have a slider like this where you can reserve a percentage of the battery only for outages. The reason I have the multimeter here is to demonstrate a little bit of how the AC coupling feature works. It's not currently exporting power from the power station, and you can see the current voltage, I have the leads plugged into an outlet, is 124.4 or 0.5 volts. Now watch what happens when I change the slider and I tell the system to start exporting power. So now it's switching and you can see the voltage starts to go up. So with this increase in voltage, it means the home loads are gonna use the power from the F3800 power station rather than from the grid. Another way to demonstrate this is by looking at the utility meter. We're outside and I wanna draw your attention to these bars right here and the arrow. Arrow indicates the direction of the current flow in the meter and the bars, how they show up, is a small indication of how fast the current is going. Now when I turn on the savings mode, I just did it look, it kind of stops. So basically what's happening here is that there's zero current passing through this meter. And if we look on the app, we can see there's zero watts being pulled from the grid. And the little indicator here is showing us that the home loads are using the power from the F3800. And with the help of those two clamp sensors that are in the main electrical panel, the home power panel knows to manipulate things such that power cannot be exported out to the grid, but only through the home loads. Now, in case you're wondering if this change in voltage is an issue, it's not as perfectly normal. Even the grid itself, when there's no battery attached will fluctuate in voltage and most of the time you don't even notice. Something interesting to consider between these two is when you are using the battery to power your home loads and the power demand is higher than what the power station can output. Now the benefit to the home power panel system with the AC coupling is that when that situation happens, when the loads are higher than what the inverter can handle, it's set up to seamlessly draw the needed excess power from the power grid. Like in this scenario, you can see what the home demand is and that there's power coming from the battery and the grid at the same time to meet that demand. When it's in local backfeeding mode and supplying power to the house loads, you'll notice that the F3800 isn't currently set up to output its maximum AC capability. There's a range of output depending on if you have one or two of these and how many extra batteries. But Anchor told me they set it up this way to preserve battery, battery life it only outputs the maximum AC output when it's in off-grid mode. On the EcoFlow system, because of the physical switch inside of here, if the home load goes over the inverter capacity, which is 4,000 watts for the Delta Pro 3, 7,200 watts for the Delta Pro Ultra, then what happens is that the Smart Home Panel 2 switches back to grid power. And that may not be a big deal for you, 
but if that happens daily, what you'll notice is that the lights may flicker and you might get a warning on the app each time that relay is clicking. My favorite way to charge batteries is with solar power. So let's talk about solar power. All three of these power stations can accept solar panels directly and both of the systems will allow you to charge with solar panels when they're on grid or off grid. Let's talk about the F3800. It has two solar inputs each that have a maximum voltage limit of 60 volts. So that means you can have up to 1200 watts on each for a total of 2400. And when I have two F3800s here, then my total possible solar input is around 4,800 watts. Depending on the type of solar panels that you use, you may need to parallel them to stay under the 60 volt limit. For example, here are eight rigid solar panels, 405 watts each, that are set up in pairs of two. They're in a parallel connection, which means that you add up the current and the voltage stays about the same, which in my case is about 30 to 35 volts. To parallel them like this, it does take some more wires and connections but it is a way to capture about 3,200 watts of solar power with the two F3800s. And it's also fun because it's part of my dream coming true, being able to power our house with solar. For the EcoFlow system, the Delta Pro 3 and the Ultra both have two solar inputs as well, but the clear winner of all three power stations is the Delta Pro Ultra. It has a massive 450 volt input and a second lower voltage input on the side which combined can give you a total of 5,600 watts of solar. And with this 450 volt input, you probably don't have to parallel panels and you could get about 10 rigid solar panels in series at that value. Though the F3800 in the home power panel system doesn't have the same direct solar input as the Ultra does, it does have something else solar related. It's got this sensor that you use if you already have a solar array. So say you have a rooftop solar array already installed and then you would clamp this on one of the solar inverter outputs. And it's much easier to do this when your solar point of connection is at the breaker on your main panel. My connection is outside and it's a bit of a challenge to get to, so that's why I haven't installed this. But what this does is it allows you to monitor your solar production and if you choose, you can set it up in the app to prioritize charging the batteries when your rooftop solar is producing. And if you have anything less than one to one net metering with your utility, this is a really helpful feature to make sure you're getting the most out of your solar panels. When you have a power outage and you want that automatic transfer to battery like I showed you at the start of the video, if you have the Anchor Solix system with the home power panel, you'll need to add a backup load center in one of the kits. It comes with one of these and you have to move your circuits over. But in my case, I have the Smart Home Panel 2, which is sort of my backup load center. And this is because when the power goes out, again, it will not backfeed. It will only supply power from the battery to the backup loads. The Smart Home Panel 2 is its own backup load center, if you will, because it has, it's sort of like a normal sub panel. And in order to set it up, it takes a little bit longer because you need to take all of your loads that you want from your main panel and put them over here. These are either your backup loads or the loads you want to monitor. And also with the Smart Home Panel 2, it has an interlock that you can switch this over to power this whole panel from a generator. So usually that's gonna be a fuel generator plugged into a generator inlet box like this. And with the EcoFlow system in the app, you also get the option to choose which circuits to prioritize during a power outage. And they give you three categories, the must have, nice to have, and non-priority. And you can see here in the non-priority, I have my electric hot water heater because it uses a lot of electricity. I mentioned both systems can be used to save money if you have time of use rates. Here's how you can set up the schedule on the Anchor app. You can choose the date time frame, and then they give you options for a weekly or weekend schedule. So you can see here I've picked different times for the various rates, super off peak, off peak, and those happen Monday to Friday. And then here's a sample weekend. And then you go down here in the bottom and then you put in how much each of those is gonna cost per kilowatt hour. So I wanna walk through a sample to help illustrate how systems like this can help save you money. Now I know there's lots of variables, so I'm gonna to try to make this somewhat simple, but one rate plan that I found from California in the summer had 25 cents per kilowatt hour for off-peak rates and 61 cents per kilowatt hour between the hours of four and 9 p.m. So let's say, for example, you get home from work, you cook dinner, you run the air conditioner, and from four to 9 p.m., you use about five kilowatt hours of electricity. Now, 61 cents minus 25 cents because you've charged your batteries up at this 25 cent rate equals 36 cents. And so five times 36 is $1.80 per day that you're saving. And so if you multiply that by 30 days, 
that is about $54 per month that you'd be saving. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of the systems, you obviously have to do your own math and homework. But if you're in the US, you also want to consider the potential 30% federal tax credit. I'm not an accountant, but I'm pretty sure that these would qualify for that. And then that will enable you to consider what your payback is for a system like this. And you'll also need to figure out how much it's worth to you to have battery backup in case there's a power outage. For example, I was just talking to a friend who has a well pump and he was without water for about eight hours because he couldn't run his well pump. And that is certainly worth something. So what's great about both of these systems is that they are DIY friendly. You don't need a dealer to put them in. You can do it yourself or hire a local electrician. I also have a dedicated review video to each of these systems if you want to go check those out on my main channel.